Okay, I can't see if uh, everything's working on Facebook now or not because I have the uh, share screen option on and that's why I'm small up in the corner. I know that uh, some people were wondering why they couldn't see uh, the person live a little bit better, but if I wanna show you the screen, that's the way it has to be. Uh, so we do thank you for your patience as we're uh, learning all of this and trying to figure all of this out. Um, we'll get better at it, you know, it takes a little bit of practice and we will, we will get better. Uh, but for now, we'll just wait a second or two to make sure that uh, folks have an opportunity to switch over from the one uh, technology mode to the other. Uh, I was saying that Janice is here with me as our musician, and I am so thankful to her for being here today and uh, for offering music. Um, it is just the two of us in the building, and we do both have masks. I'm not wearing it when I'm speaking to you, uh, but at other times. Um, I do wear my mask out in public, which reminds me that we are beginning a mask campaign. Uh, we've had a couple of offers from folks to make masks. Uh, typically on any Sunday, we have anywhere from 60 to 110 people maybe in the sanctuary. Uh, and so if you're able to make, um, you know, 20 masks or so for us at a time, we would truly appreciate that. And then we can have them on hand when our building opens up. Uh, we're aiming for a September opening. Uh, we have to get our policy in place and uh, get it approved by the region before we can do that, uh, but we're working towards that. So, as we begin, we remember that there was once a person who said such amazing things and who did such incredible things that people began to follow him. And as they followed him, they would ask him questions. And one time they asked him, who are you? And he replied, I am the light. And so as we gather for worship this morning, we remember the light of the world who promises to be wherever two or three gather in his name, even virtually. And so we begin with uh, our hymn from More Voices, 92, Like a Rock. And I think we'll sing it through three times, if that's okay. <laughs> rock like a rock god is under our feet like the starry night sky god is over our head like the sun on the horizon god is ever before like a river runs to ocean a home is in god evermore like a rock like a rock God is under our feet, like the starry night sky, God is over our head, like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before, like a river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore, like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. Like a river runs to ocean, our home is in God As we share in the call to worship, uh, because I can't hear you, I will read all of the parts. Traditionally, uh, when we, when we uh, post the, the images of worship, the leader reads the yellow and uh, the congregation reads the white. And so you're invited to do whatever makes you feel comfortable this morning. Let us gather in the call to worship. 
Something made the hair stand up on our necks. Was it you, O oh God? Was it you that we saw blowing over the water? Was it you that we felt in the beating of our own hearts? Was it you that called our names? Come, O oh God, come to search us. Come to know us again. We were knit in your womb. We have tried to count your works. Come, O oh God, so that we can hear you calling our names here and now. And we'll continue with prayer. And you can uh, read along on the printed service that you have. What a mixed bunch we are, Jesus. And what a tortoise shell world we live in. Light and shadow, grace and judgment, goodness and sin side by side in each of us. But our deep longing is that the life-giving, nourishing fruit we bear may overwhelm whatever weeds may creep in. May our capacity for love and friendship be stronger than our tendency to hatred and divisiveness. May our search for truth and wisdom be satisfied more than our quest for denial and self-justification. May our desire for joy and goodness be larger than our lust for wealth and power. May our journey to peace and wholeness lead us away from the path of war, violence, and self-destruction. Make us those who live your values and purpose in a world that too easily chooses curses over blessing, wounding over healing, and destruction over creativity, so that all creation may finally find its place in your harvest of life and love. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the gospel or from the um, Hebrew scriptures from the book of Genesis in the 28th chapter, verses 10 to 19a. And it continues the story of Abraham and his family. We have passed Isaac and Rebekah and now come to the story or part of the story of Jacob. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and he lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall be spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. 
So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz. And Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone, which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give back to you. Our gospel reading this morning is another parable. And this parable can be found in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. We're still talking about weeds. We talked about weeds last week too, didn't we? We talked about uh, the seed, the sower that went out and cast the seeds on a variety of different grounds and the weeds that choked out the good seed. And so today, uh, from chapter 13, 24 to 30, and 36 to 43, uh, we hear about the weeds that were found among the wheat. 24 to 30. And so Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did all these weeds come from? And he answered them, An enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house and his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered them saying, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. Then the son of man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers. And they will throw them into the fire where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. May God bless to us these readings from Holy Scripture that they may be light and witness for us in our time and in our lives. Amen. Now, I think that uh, the service that I sent out this week has uh, the hymn now, but I prefer to sing the hymn after the reflection, and so I hope you don't mind that. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer.
Well, if we had read earlier on in the passage of, of uh, Genesis, we would have heard the beginning of the story, the part of the story where uh, Jacob tricks his brother into uh, giving away his inheritance for a bowl of stew. Seems a little funny, doesn't it? To give up everything to satisfy an immediate hunger. And there are other pieces of the story that seem familiar to us as well when we hear about Jacob. Maybe you felt when you read over his life story that you have heard the story before, that it somehow feels familiar to you, like we've been here before. And not just because you've actually heard this particular story before. Jacob 28 as a chapter, Genesis 28 as a chapter, describes how Jacob tricked his brother, lied to his father, schemed with his mother, and then fled for his life. And Jacob finds himself in a place between the home that he has known and the life that is ahead of him. And so this might feel familiar to us as we find ourselves between the life we knew before March 13th the life that we are living now, and the life that we will enter as restrictions ease up socially, politically, personally, and as a church. We find ourselves in a place that is neither here nor there, but in a transitional phase that might feel uncomfortable for some, uh, that might feel scary or uncertain for some. And yet for others, it feels like a welcome relief. Uh, and there's joy to be found there. Others feel anger or impatience, fear or boredom, relief, and even thanksgiving. As darkness falls in that place that Jacob found himself in, he settles down to rest, laying his head upon a stone. And during the night, he dreams of a ladder stretched between earth and heaven with angels ascending and descending the ladder. And he becomes very aware of God standing beside him, offering words of promise and sustenance and legacy. Waking, Jacob cries, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he takes the stone that he used for a pillow and he sets it up as a pillar and he pours oil on top of it. And then Jacob renames the place Beth El, House of God. You know, I think that Jacob might be one of the most interesting of the patriarchs, even if he might not be the most admirable among them. And it's kind of funny when you realize just how many of the people that we name as great in our faith history are deeply flawed. And at one point in the, or another in the story, their duplicity and their cowardice might even dismay us. Think for a second about Peter the Rock, who denied Jesus three times. Think of Judas, who betrayed Jesus, traded him for a bag of gold. Think of Jonah hightailing it in the other direction. And even in this particular lineage, think of Abraham and Isaac lying about the identity of their wives, Sarah and Rebecca, to protect their own skin. But Jacob's lies, they are astonishing in their breezy self-interest and greed as he repeatedly reassures his poor, blind, yet still suspicious father that he is not Isaac's younger son, but his older son, favorite son, Esau. And he gets a blessing. <laughs> what a shameful way to get a blessing. Second born Jacob, the twin grasping at his brother's heel from birth, the rogue who repeatedly gets into trouble, but somehow still evokes love and devotion, at least from his mother and from many descendants, as well as lovers of great stories today. He's the one who gets the blessing. It doesn't seem fair, does it? That the one who cheated to gain an undeserved birthright and blessing will become the one through whom the entire human family will receive a blessing? 
Well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that that doesn't seem fair for readers of that ancient family and for anyone who struggles with God, for anyone who is enmeshed in battles with their families, for each one of us who is far from perfect. For if we only ever get what we deserve, if we only ever receive the blessings that we have earned and the love bestowed upon us by God and others, well, then I think that we too might be running away and seeking the wilderness. Because the truth is sometimes we are not very nice people. The truth is sometimes we are not very lovable people. And it doesn't matter how well we try and hide it. We treat people terribly sometimes. And if we try to be good, we end up just kind of living the pretense, I think, until ultimately we give ourselves away. Ultimately, we mess up and we hurt someone. Or we make a choice that serves us, but destroys someone else. We can only pretend for so long until we find ourselves in that wilderness of self-doubt or the barren place of rejection, in the desert of defamation or the wilderness of woundedness. It's the place where shame looks back at us from the mirror. The place where our hearts thump and nearly choke out our breath. Where we feel alone by our own choice to flee from the betrayal and the hurt that we have caused. Or by the hurt and bewilderment and anguish of those we have been hurt by and betrayed by. And yet there in that place there the one who cheated the one who lied who deceived the one who schemed and betrayed and tricked and stole and ran there jacob receives a blessing there jacob discovers himself on holy ground and he discovers hope and he discovers possibility and promise from the one who loves him no matter what. After, a while, after all, it wasn't a surprise to God who this man was. God knew Jacob. God had searched him, searched him and known him. God knew who Jacob was from before he was born. God knew Jacob when he was in the womb and he told Rebecca, his mother, what would happen. That she was sick for so long because there were two nations at war in her womb. Do you feel like you've heard this story before? Does it feel familiar like maybe we've been here before? Maybe it's because we have. And not just because Jacob's story reminds us of his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. Maybe it feels so familiar because there are just things that we need to be told over and over and over. Like that we are God's beloved. Like that we are a chosen people. Like there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God and nowhere we can go to escape the breadth of God's love. Like there is nothing we can do that will cause God to stop loving us. Like everywhere we are is holy ground, an opportunity to meet God. Like blessings abound even for those who feel themselves or the world names as unworthy of them. What are the things that you need to know again and again? When you find yourself alone, caught betwixt and between, know that God is also in that place, waiting to bestow a blessing on you. When you feel most unloved and filled with shame or remorse or regret, know that God will always love you. 
When you feel nothing at all in particular, neither good nor bad, look around and know that you are in Beth El, the house of God. And the place that you stand is holy ground. Know these things and be blessed. And so if you brought a rock and some oil with you now, I would invite you to take those up. To take your rock and set it in the midst of the space where you are worshiping. Beth El, that holy ground where God meets us. And I would invite you to take your oil and to do as Jacob did. And pour it as an offering of thanksgiving. And so we sing. Voices United, 644. I was there. We are so extremely grateful at Young's Point and Lakefield United Churches for the generosity that you have been uh, giving while we have been away from these beautiful buildings. We are so incredibly thankful for uh, the gifts to our roof campaign and uh, 
just your ongoing faithfulness in terms of helping us to support this ministry. The ministry has continued despite not being in the building, and we hope that you have felt that as well. And so we pray that God's steadfast love is poured out onto these gifts that we offer and into us. Our offerings are but a small part of the way in which we serve God and God's people. We ask that God bless them and bless us to ministries of healing and hope. Amen. Would you pray with me? For all the blessings of this life, we give thanks to you, Creator God. For families, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and strangers who nurture us that the love of God may grow within. That your love, your word, like a seed, may grow to produce in us good fruit. The leaders of nations and cities, we pray that they may lead with strong hearts and gentle hands and generous spirits, with compassion and mercy, with wisdom and grace. For those who serve in harm's way, those who live in dangerous places, those who live in areas of war and strife, those who live in fear, those who worry about employment, bills, food, and struggle just to find dignity in life. May your grace bring peace and safety. For those who suffer from any illness or dis-ease of mind, body, or spirit, restore these and all those we carry in our hearts to fullness of health, health as only you, O oh God, can bring. May your mercy shower each of us with healing mercy and love. For those who are dying, for those who have died, send forth your comforting love, give solace to those who mourn, console those who grieve. And in our community this day, we pray for George and Debbie, Ed and Mary, Tanya and Brian, Jean and Lenore, Ashley and Kirk, Marion and Keith, and so many others in our community and in our hearts in need of the abiding presence and love of God. May your grace surround us and them, like a mantle upon our heads, a shawl upon our shoulders, a hand to hold our hand. May your love be like a seed, taking root and growing strong. We gather these prayers together with the words that you taught your friends so long ago, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so we sing again. All the way our Savior leads us. Yeah. 
So it is time to change the light because we know that the light was there in one place for one time but it couldn't be in all places and all times and so it had to change so watch as we change the light and maybe you can see it the smoke rising up and thinning out and spreading out to this whole place. But maybe you can't because the camera can't pick it up in this big space. But if you light a candle and you blow it out, you too will see the flame change and the smoke rise and spread out and thin until it fills the entire place where you are. So that everywhere you go in that place, when you take in a breath, you will take in that light. And every time you exhale, you will give that light to whatever space that you find yourself in. Yes. Beth El, the place of God. We are always on holy ground, always in the presence of the one who is the light, the one who is love. Thanks be to God. And so my friends, where can we go from the spirit? Where can we hide from God's presence? There is no place that we can go where we will be forgotten by God. There is no place that we can fall into that God cannot find us. God restores us and sets our feet back on right paths. We are forgiven, we are loved, and we are restored. Go and share the good news that God loves you madly. Go in peace, my friends. Amen.